Why isn't Jacksonville the real Hollywood? Why is silent film dead and gone? And why is Richard Norman unknown? Richard Norman was born in middle in Orange Park area, and um, decided very early on that he wanted to be in movies. He decided what he saw in the Midwest, because this was the home of race film. People like Michaud and the uh, Johnson brothers, etc., were making films. This was a reaction to the uh, stereotypical, demeaning roles that were available to African Americans in film at that time. The, it's important to have a positive representation of blacks in, mus in, in movies because typically in America, um, African Americans are not represented in a positive light. We don't see us as the pickaninny and the ignorant person. We don't, we're not all that way and we don't all see ourselves that way. And he said, I can do that. And he thought that the South particularly needed this kind of film in which black characters were the heroes and the villains, the rich guys and the poor guys, the doctors, the lawyers, and the Indian chiefs. We have played The Flying Ace, which is the only remaining film. And we're so grateful that that's, if we can only have one, that's the one to have. Well, this little vignette here is uh, artifacts from The uh, Flying Ace. The desk that the paymaster or the uh, station master sits at. Uh, actually, uh, this is on the uh, plaque that's outside. Um, this is part of the plane. Richard built the plane that was used in the film. This is the rudder down here. And we wish we had the whole thing. We have a guy who's going to try to make a, a smaller version of it for us. He could see blacks in a positive light and not uh, and not present us in the normal way. I'm not sure if he said, I'm tired of seeing that, uh, or he knew somebody, or, but see, and that's the question. A lot of these filmmakers who represented blacks in a negative way, they know black people too. I mean, they've known who, those who speak proper English and dress well and have proper etiquette, but yet they represented us in that way. By this time in California, Hollywood was beginning to ramp up. They didn't get started until about five years after Jacksonville did. When in 1907, a guy came down and uh, on the train, stepped off and said, wow, this is where we're gonna do um, location filming from now on. There was, no, there was nothing in this area anyway, no place for anybody to stay. But even if there had been, the African Americans would not have been able to use those facilities. So they stayed here on this campus, either upstairs or in the wardrobe cottage. Now, Gloria became the commissary agent, <laughs> his wife. She did the cooking and so forth. And so they had this little integrated community here. And uh, I would love to have been a fly on the wall in those days. Uh, when Norman was in operation, Jacksonville was actually in decline as the silent movie film capital of the world. Fortunately for Norman Studios, it happened to be across the river. So they didn't really care what happened on, in Arlington at that particular time. I think the most significant role it plays is that it's still there. And that everything else, we had over 30 studios and everything else has been wiped out, demolished, gone for decades. And here you, you not only have the initial building that still stands, but the whole complex. Richard is an anomaly. He's a white producer of race films. There are many great anthologies, both on film and also in books, about race film. Richard has not mentioned any of them. I'll leave you to figure out why. I would assume that it's because he didn't fit. Uh, his movies were a lot better <laughs> than, than the, uh, some of the ones that were being made. But 
He just didn't fit. This is a white guy making black movies. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah.